Hello and welcome to another X-Plane 11 video. Today we're in the Tolis A319. We're going to fly a fictional flight from Vienna up to Edinburgh as Speedbird 987. Uh, should take a little over two and a half hours to fly, right around two and a half hours. Did the dispatching and everything in Simbrief like I usually do. We are in X-Plane 11.5 RC3 with Vulcan turned on using just default clouds an active sky XP injecting the weather. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the plane loaded up. We'll open the TOLUS ISCS screen, go to loading and performance, and Simbrief gave us a zero fuel weight that we're shooting for of 55.5 tons. We'll just go a little bit nose heavy there. It's not really, not really nose heavy, but anyway, it's fine. There's 55.5 tons. We're looking for 9.7 tons of fuel. 9.8 is fine. Excellent. Now the plane is cold and dark, so let's see. We do have external power hooked up. So if we hop in the flight deck, we can come up here to the batteries and turn the battery masters on and then turn on external power. And we can set the IRSs to nav. We'll take the no smoking light, arm emergency lights, and we'll take the nav lights. Now, really the only thing I still intensely dislike about the Tolis planes is that you start with the displays all basically very dark and have to turn all of them up and there's not a great way to change that that I've discovered so maybe I'm just missing something I just have to come in here and turn them all all the way up every time which isn't the it's not the biggest deal in the world so we're good there everything down here is good we'll go ahead and turn on radio panels one, two, and three. And technically I actually did the irises out of order. You should have done this one to nav, then this one to nav, then the middle one to nav, but muscle memory's difficult. Packs will be high. And that's us done with the overhead for now. Now down to the MCDU, you need to go to the inner page. We are flying from Vienna to Edinburgh. We'll align IRS. We will load an XP flight plan to save us some time here. We'll scoot through all of these plans. There's the one we need. We are Speedbird 987. Our cost index today, according to Simbrief, is going to be 34. And our cruising altitude is going to be flight level 360. And put those values in. Now, if we bring the TOLUS screen back up, we can go back to that loading and performance page. And I remember that we put in 9.8 tons of fuel. And I know that our zero fuel weight is 55.5 tons and that our zero fuel weight CG is 27.4 percent. Put that in. Perfect. Over on the flight plan page we should and do have an awful lot of flight plan in here which is great. Brings us all the way it's everything between the end of the SID and the beginning of the star which is just what we want. So we'll go back up here to the top. We could just click flight plan. We'll click on Vienna and put our departure in. We'll depart runway 34. And our SID is going to be the Otgar 2 Delta. So we'll pop down here. And I, I just take whatever Simbrief gives me as far as runways and everything goes just kind of makes life a little bit simpler when you're not going 35 different places to look stuff up. 
So that is our departure in, which is great. Um, I can go ahead and do the arrival just so that we have uh, accurate top of descent. Um, the approach we choose may change, but the star itself will not. So we'll take the ILS onto runway 24 via the NPIP-1 echo. And we'll say Novia. And stick that in. And we're good to go. So that's going to get us all the way from runway 34 in Vienna to runway 24 in Edinburgh. And that is all of that programming done. Now we can go over to the performance page. And I know we want to use flap 1. So that will give us V speeds and all that kind of stuff. We use flap 1. Our flex temp is going to be 68. And our V speeds will be 149, 149, and 152. All right. So that is pretty much everything set up. We can do a few more things before we deal with getting a tow truck hooked up and waiting on the IRSs to align. Firstly, we'll start the APU. We'll go ahead and take APU bleed and we can take all of the fuel pumps. Excellent. We'll leave the seatbelt sign off. Everything down here is good to go. The transponder is good to go. We'll set it to TIRA and leave it in auto mode. Our trim, which I didn't remember to look at, is going to be... Oh man, come on. Up 0.4. So we need to look for that. When we get to that point, I'm going to go ahead and... We can't do anything until we have hydraulic pressure, of course, so we'll wait. We'll set the weather radar to weather plus turbulence. Auto, auto, and auto. I don't know how to operate the weather radar, so it's fine. We'll put a little bit of tilt up on it. Excellent. So that leaves us in a place where we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set 360 in the MCP just to have that done. We'll get our local altimeter. Which seems to be out of date. Uh, so we'll just go to Active Sky and grab it. It's 1018. And here in a few minutes, the IRSs will be aligned. I'll turn on the seatbelt sign and have better pushback. Get hooked up and start pushing us back so that we can get out of here. And then we'll handle the engine start. All right, better pushback is hooked up. The beacon is on. The seatbelt sign is on. We're off of external power. The IRSs are aligned. Everything is in great shape. So we can clear the GPS primary message there. We can release the parking brake. We'll flip ignition over parking to start. And, you may stop the and we'll start engine two. Engine two is in good shape. We'll start engine one. Uh, 
I'll have the uh, plane and the sceneries I'm using linked in the description below, so check those links out if they're sceneries you're interested in. This is Gaia Simulations Vienna for X-Plane, uh, available on Orbix Direct, and we are flying to Orbix Edinburgh. They're both uh, very well done. I really love both those airports. Um, glad I bought them. I bought this Vienna for Microsoft Flight Simulator first and then decided, ah, man, I have to have it for, uh, for X-Plane as well. And engine one is good. So ignition can go back to normal. Let's take flaps one. We'll arm the speed brakes. And let's look at the flight control page. We're looking for 0.4 degrees up on the trim. There's that. We'll do a quick, quick flight control check. Everything's good there. We'll take auto brake max. And we can lose APU bleed and the APU. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, so now I'm going to cut the video again. We're going to, I'm going to deal with the taxi. So parking brake set. I'm going to wait on the tug to get unhooked. And then I'm going to handle the taxi out to runway 34. Get us all ready to go and uh, we'll pick up with the departure. All right, here we are at 3-4 in Vienna. I did notice that while I was, just after I had sung the praises of, these, of this airport, uh, I did drive right over some approach lights that were in a taxiway, and that is kind of annoying. So we'll go ahead and turn the landing lights on. All the other lights can all come on. We'll start the clock, we will click the call forward cabin button which will trigger the cabin ready thing for us and we'll test takeoff config takeoff config normal which is just what we want to see we'll turn the weather radar on and we're ready to get out of here so we'll lose the parking brake and immediately slide around a little bit didn't mean to put that that far just do this no delay style the engines are stable and look good which is great so go flex and flex SRS runway perfect all the right things showing up on the PFD there I should have a little nose down pressure on the stick hundred knots So right, we'll bring the gear up. Looks gorgeous on our climb out. range down and put the autopilot in pull thrust back to climb power we can disarm the speed brakes we can lose some lights here
straight. We'll bring the flaps up. And that is us off out of Vienna and on our way up to cruise. So that wraps up this part of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the channel. Subscribe. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, also, just want to point out those links in the video description again. Lots of helpful answers down there, so check those things out. Obviously, feel free to leave a comment. If you've got any feedback or anything you'd like to let me know, go for it. Uh, thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you in part two, where we're going to deal with the approach and uh, setting up the approach, our descent, and then the actual approach into Edinburgh.